Blessings. Thank you, Bita. <clears throat> yep, the end of a retreat is a time to maybe, first of all, um, <coughs> bring up the thought of gratitude, <coughs> 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 appreciation for the people who made it possible. So particularly to the, like Peter says, the committee of the and volunteers of Buddha Dhamma Foundation who did the Zoom uh, over the last five days. You can go wider or broader than that also to your the people who maybe you have family members who allowed you, supported you to spend some time doing meditation while you're at home. I didn't notice any uh, kids coming in and bothering their parents or siblings or other family members coming in and interrupting anyone. It may have happened, I don't know, but I didn't notice it happen. So that's a sign everyone has got good conditions at home. <clears throat> you know, if you have a computer, you have um, internet connection, you've got a room, you can practice. <coughs> You can even do a retreat like this. That's something to be grateful for. You know, the opportunities we have to practice the Dhamma in all kinds of situations. Um, and I think it's important to learn how to practice at home because so often we think of Dhamma practice as something you only do in the temple or a retreat center and not something you do at home. Whereas now you all have proven you can practice the Dhamma at home, just as it may have its own set of obstacles or challenges at home because of the proximity to other people or the comforts and the distractions. But still, if you've learned to do some quiet meditation at home, have a bit of discipline doing sitting, walking meditation, listening to the talks and so on, that's something to be very happy about and to use for the future. One way we practice the Dhamma is we rely on skillful perceptions, you know, skillful memories and bringing up skillful perceptions to mind. So we've been talking about vipassana meditation where you bring up the perception of impermanence or not self for example but also just bringing up the perception that your home is a place where you can practice the Dhamma. And if you've been meditating and experienced some joy, some pity and sukha, some happiness, chanting or listening to Dhamma or meditating while you've been on this retreat, that's something you might be able to access again in the future. You, next time you're meditating, you may be on your own, not part of a retreat, but you do some meditation and you can think back to the time previously where you were peaceful, where your mind was more focused on Dhamma and mindfulness was present. And you can bring up that perception again and again and again in the future. Sometimes that's all it takes. You just think of a Dhamma teacher or you think of a teaching or you think of even just how you felt when you were peaceful, last time you were peaceful, and you bring up that perception and it works. And it actually helps you to let go of different distractions and your mind settles down quickly. And if you've got that possibility when you're at home, then that's a very rare and very valuable thing to have. Because <clears throat> sometimes, as we know, you're at home, you... Sometimes you experience the worst stresses when you're at home or you're ill at home or you have this problem or that problem at home. If you can still go and meditate, calm your mind down, get a better insight into whatever the problem is, that's a very valuable thing. So part of our practice is just to appreciate all the good causes and conditions that we have to be uh, thankful to the people who help us, the teachers, the organisers, our own families, whoever. Even to be thankful to our self <laughs> that you, you, know, you made the effort to come on the retreat. 
you can be thankful that you had that aspiration, that intention, you completed it, you did the retreat. Whatever came up in your mind during the retreat, you know, sometimes we're more peaceful than we expected, sometimes it's harder than we expect. It just, it doesn't matter, the important thing is to be making that effort and doing it. <clears throat> and you can be thankful to all these different people and the conditions and the different factors that have allowed you to be able to do this. You know, that's something to appreciate and hopefully repeat in the future. As we've been hearing, you know, people have their worries about sickness, aging, the state of the world, all the problems that we face in daily life. And so I would recommend, you know, the practice of Dhamma is the way to skillfully negotiate the problems of life and further your spiritual practice, further your understanding of truth to find real peace inside. We can only do so much with the world around us to make it, to improve it and make it better. You know, society is a big place, the world is a big place. We can do some things to improve and perhaps we should, but <clears throat> in the end the, the place where you can be most effective for improving your life, <coughs> having, experiencing more happiness, is your own mind. And that's where your efforts will bear most fruit. And that's why we have to learn some of these skills, how to meditate, how to bring up mindfulness, how to reflect on the Dhamma, how to introduce more skillful thinking into our, our consciousness. This is all for useful, these are all useful life skills, useful things we can do for now and for the future. And I always say at the end of retreats, you know, don't, don't think the retreat finishes just when you, you turn off the screen or the actual closing homage is said and that's the end of it. <clears throat> the effects, the good karma and the good effects of this retreat can be very long lasting. <clears throat> you may be doing something totally unrelated next week, working or traveling or doing this, doing that. <coughs> <coughs> and your mind might gather together and become calm and be peaceful. At some time in the future, your mind might become calm, peaceful, or you might have some insight arise. Just see that you need to let go of a certain thing you were holding on to, you know, a negative thought, a reaction, an emotion. You might allow your mind just to go peaceful when it comes up. And part of that is the result of having done <coughs> done this retreat. Anyway, it looks like my time is up. My throat is not going to allow me to teach anymore, I think, because I've spoken enough. So I won't try to give you any more instruction now. I just encourage you to keep practicing, uh, ideally every day. Keep bringing the Dhamma into your heart on a daily basis and you'll find that that brings some meaning and some value to your life. But I won't uh, carry on teaching now, but we have a few things to do. I think uh, there'll be a forgiveness ceremony and sharing merits, so we can move into that. Now on behalf of the Sangha, we'll give a blessing uh, to you all for you know, appreciation, Anamodana, for your efforts in keeping precepts, meditating, listening to the Dhamma, chanting over the last five days. <clears throat> may it be a cause, this merit, may it be a cause for you to progress in your Dhamma practice all the way to enlightenment. 
the slides coming up on the sharing of verses and aspiration and uh, may Lung Paul and the Sangha lead us in this uh, recitation. We'll chant in English if that's okay. Yes, I think that's okay. <laughs> <coughs> Now let us chant the verses of sharing and aspiration Through the goodness that arises from my practice May my spiritual teachers and guides of grateful to My mother, my father and my relatives The sun and the moon and all virtuous leaders of the world may the highest gods and evil forces celestial beings guardian spirits of the earth and the lord of death may those who are friendly indifferent or hostile may all beings receive the blessings of my life May they soon attain the threefold bliss and realize the deathless through the goodness that arises from my practice and through this act of sharing. May your desires and attachments quickly cease and all harmful states of mind until I realize Nibbana in every kind of birth may i have an upright mind with mindfulness and wisdom austerity and vigor may the forces of delusion not take hold nor weaken my resolve the buddha is my excellent refuge unsurpassed is the protection of the dhamma the solitary Buddha is my noble guide. The Sangha is my supreme support. Through the supreme power of all these, may darkness and delusion be dispelled by the protective power of the ten meritorious deeds. May Mara gain no opening. <coughs> <coughs> 